Welcome to the John Roberts Gaming Channel, this is John Roberts, and you are watching Allied Placement 2, Episode 3. But before you watch Allied Placement 2, Episode 3, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. So Allied Placement 2, Episode 3, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Soviet Union, round five. Let's take a look. We can produce five out of uh, Russia. If I repair one, do it like that. All right, I like that. Five infantry, one artillery. Repaired one point of damage. So now can we do this? Nine, 10. We have to risk the fighters. Hmm. Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I don't need to risk the fighters. I can only use two infantry. Two, three infantry. Let's look at that. I don't know if that's going to cut it. Maybe it's not a good idea. I don't want to risk my Soviet fighters. It's a great risk for the Soviets when we could just take these two soft captures. Let's see here. One, two, three, I think is good there. And one infantry and one artillery. Eh, not even, just two infantry. One fighter for each. How's that sound? I think I like it. This says it's strong, so it's gotta be, right? May the dice gods be with us. Okay, so he can bring 9, 10, 17, I've got 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Ooh, I can make it 17 right here. That shores it up a bit. Only 3 fighters. He's got 7, 9 infantry. Hmm. I think it'd be a foolhardy attack for him though. Well, let's take this German sub. I probably meant to do that last turn and did not. Or two turns ago. Or maybe even three turns ago. I am not double and triple checking. Or I'm not doing a good job of it. Doing it with my eyes closed. Looks good. Okay, one artillery, five infantry into Germany. Let's see what Germany has in store for us.
Okay, UK round five. So we'll check out Germany's round five. Two fighters, 10 infantry. So like I said, he's going with trying to take out my fleets. I have them split up right now. So we're gonna have to do what we can to uh, defend that. We have these four destroyers here and he can only reach this territory with one bomber at the moment. So we probably can afford one of these destroyers into C zone eight to help the British because they have one, two, six, seven, eight. If we bring one destroyer, that would be nine. Another destroyer would be 10. And then we can match them. The British have, as far as loot, 27. Hmm. Yeah, we're not gonna be producing any, uh, any battleships with the British. Hmm. It's a tough one, that's a tough one. Maybe two of these destroyers? We leave two here. Yeah, we could put two destroyers here. Hmm, we need a destroyer for here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Definitely a tough one, definitely a tough one. We don't have to buy anything for India. We have five, six here with three transports. Maybe we do get a battleship. The thing is, he's starting to get a large stack of fighters and he has a lot of firepower here so this is 27 31 in firepower and i have here 8 16 17 18 19 20 21 two more destroyers would bring that up to the 25 so same number of units more firepower for him i honestly if he did attack this season 8 or this season 15 with all of these aircraft I would expect him to lose quite a few aircraft. It might be welcome, but it it, uh, it could turn out to be one of those rounds where he just hits everything and I hit nothing back and it could be disastrous. So we just want to make sure we have, if we don't match him in firepower, we want to have more hit points. If we don't have more hit points, we want to at least match him in firepower. So down here we have 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 25, 29. One more destroyer, 30, 31. Meaning we will match him in firepower and in numbers. Counting the battleships as two, of course. So we would match him in firepower and we would have one more hit point than he has. So putting a battleship here would give us two hit points in instantly. With the destroyer, and a destroyer here, we could leave two destroyers behind and bring this destroyer here and still have three against the one bomber. I think that's what we're gonna have to do. Let's let's finish reviewing Germany's round, of course. Took some free land, took some free land. Uh, Libya, destroyed two infantry, but lost two infantry. Italy, destroyed three infantry and one artillery, but lost five infantry. I'll take that, that's nice. Those are the types of trades that we want to be making with the United States. Very good, very good. Ukraine, he failed. With a one-on-one, -on -one, it looks like. Belarus, he took. Finland, he took, but he failed to take the territory. He lost two infantry there. He had some unlucky trades this round, it looks like. Lost one infantry in Northwest Europe. And his only movement was aircraft to Germany. He mobilized everything in Germany. Oh, I was wrong. I lied. Two infantry did go to Karelia. It's not even like I have uh, any aircraft or anything that I could just do a uh, aircraft carrier. So let's just do that. Let's purchase a battleship. And we're only going to be able to purchase two land units. We'll save one. So now this down here. Uh, we don't have to defend these. These were put here as a sacrifice to get rid of that battleship and transport. Uh, 24 to get rid of 27. Slight profit. I just... Uh, I had to get rid of this. Maybe it wasn't worth the two bombers, but I had to get rid of this. Let's see what these British can do here. Should we send the tank into Africa? No, then he can get hit with these two. We'll send an infantry into Africa. 
let's take four of these infantry. Because we don't need them all. Land them in France. We'll reserve these two. And we'll have four next round. Don't really have anything interesting here. I think the best thing to do is to just take Belgian Congo. I think this is Belgian Congo. Belgian Congo, it is. Probably my only attacks. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, what, let's see about landing you. Morocco looks good. These tanks, if I put them in West Russia, they can help hold West Russia and possibly help trade. If I put them in Russia, they could help with trading with the Japanese. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Not really gonna hold caucuses. Does this bomber make it? The bomber can make it there too. No, I'm not gonna try to hold Kazak where he produced this uh, industrial complex without being able to hold it. I, I don't think that was very prudent in my opinion. But here it is. So here's how I think I'll do it. Two tanks into West Russia, one into Russia. Let's put this infantry and artillery in Caucasus. So we're not moving these units. You stay put. And that is a double and triple check. Looks good. Okay, so a battleship. Sea Zone 8, 2 infantry in UK. Let's see what Japan has in store for us. It's USA round 5. So we will review Japan round 6. No, we will review Japan round 5. That would be a neat trick though if I could review Japan round 6 right now. I don't think I'd ever lose a game if I was capable of doing that. 6 infantry, 1 bomber, another industrial complex. Or is that the first industrial complex? Oh, that's right, yes. Okay, a successful bombing raid. Took New Zealand. Took Ivanki. Took Persia, lost an infantry there. And he took back Kazakh, lost two infantry there. So, non combat. Down to C Zone 36. Sheshuan. Two aircraft carriers to 61. Submarine and destroyer to C Zone 40. Kwangtung. And then mobilized. But an industrial complex in Kwangtung. A bomber and three infantry in Japan and three infantry in India. So here he's got 9, 10, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to put another destroyer here. I'm also going to put a destroyer here to make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So normally when Germany is purchasing aircraft like this, I'll ball up United States and United Kingdom in C Zone 8 because this is costly keeping up with this, but he kind of caught me in a situation where I didn't think he was going to really be pushing the aircraft and then all of a sudden he bought two in one turn. And I was already split and I decided, well, let's go with the split. If I can defend them both, that's even better. And I think I can do it successfully. So what do we want to purchase? Well, we got six transports here. So this makes seven, eight. 
So if I get two more, that's uh, 9, 10. And I have three transports here to go back to 11, so I would need six uh, land units. And then we can get an aircraft. Now, do I want a bomber or do I want more fighters? Fighters, of course, help in attack. They help with trading and they are very good in defense. Bombers, of course, have long range and are very heavy hitting and are actually the most efficient uh, unit you can purchase for naval attack. Because the question is, it does not look like I really am going to have trouble defending this territory, but maybe I should just go with the fighter. Let's see, does USA have a bomber? Or have we lost our bomber? USA does not have a bomber, so therefore we will purchase a bomber. And let's see here. We can get two artillery and four infantry and save two IPCs. That sounds nice. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I got three transports going back and I'm producing two more transports. So let's perhaps only one more transport. We'll do something like this. Five infantry and three artillery. One transport, one bomber. Looks good. All right, so I want to take these two transports over here to C Zone 14 from C Zone 15, and I want to load these two artillery and two of these infantry. Actually, no, that is wrong. I want one artillery and three infantry. So we can assault Italy and we can take Southern Europe. Now with the interface, since I loaded the artillery first and then I unloaded in Italy first, it should be here, but I always check because I just don't trust it. And there it is. Okay, four aircraft fighters. And we'll use the bombardment up. This is quite overkill for one. In fact, Let's take two of these fighters from C Zone 15 and we'll attack Libya with these three infantry. I kind of wish I had one US infantry right now. This would be a nice little can opener. Nothing good for the sub. Is there a destroyer here? No. Where is his destroyer? Down here. Can't reach me. All right. May the dice gods be with us. All right, those all worked out. They all worked out very well. Let's put all of the aircraft back into C Zone 15. I'm gonna put this tank into Libya. Move up these two units from Morocco into Algeria. Okay, these destroyers, like I said, once C Zone 15, once C Zone 8, we'll leave one, we'll leave two behind and bring in this additional destroyer. These three transports will take these six infantry and we'll drop them in Morocco. And these three transports will return. This fighter will land in Morocco. This sub will stay put. Double and triple check. Not moving any of these units. Not moving you. Not moving this sub. Not moving these two. Any aircraft or artillery. And I don't see any other units. That's a double, let's make it a triple check. Looks good. But never hurts to look one more time. I can't stress it enough. I've ranked gold and I probably could have ranked platinum at some point if I had not made mistakes clicked this button before you were ready. There is a failsafe button for a reason. Alright, we'll put 
the bomber in eastern USA, transport in C-Zone 11, three artillery and five infantry in eastern USA, and we will send it over to Soviet Union. Soviet Union round six. So we have a capacity of seven. That's four here and three here. Do I want four here? He's got four, five, six, seven, eight. He's got all this aircraft. I don't want to really put anything here, do I? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. So let's see, if I can only five, yeah, I can only put three there. So three infantry leaves 16. So four means I could put another, but I want a tank. I want a tank. I don't want to just build infantry. All right, that looks good. So seven, eight, okay. He's got nine, 10 aircraft that can come in there. Can we do it with just infantry and artillery? Don't need any tanks. Just send some infantry and some artillery. That might be good enough. It says favorable. What if we give it one tank? That's strong. What if we remove one artillery? Favorable, so, okay. I think that's doable though. We might even be able to just strafe it. If he has like one or two infantry left, maybe we just strafe it. Even though, if we take this, we don't have any infantry to take this now, do we? Let's let's redo this. Let's redo this. Because he could hit this with the aircraft too. Let, let's let's redo this. Let's let's go. Three. The three in artillery there. Use one of our fighters. Probably gonna use the other one in Archangel. Then three tanks. And three infantry. That should be good. He has no tanks here, so we don't have to block anything. It's strong. Uh, two of these infantry and this artillery. No, not this artillery. Excuse me. You already have a fighter. One more infantry. And then these two infantry into Kazak with the uh, artillery. We don't need to put anything in Ukraine. He doesn't have any tanks. All he has is a lot of aircraft to just destroy whatever we put in here. It would be useless. We probably wouldn't even take anything with it. Might as well just leave it empty. All right, all right. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, that all worked out as well as I could have hoped. Now what to do with the fighters? Let's put the fighters in Russia, where we just know that they're safe from all aircraft and blah blah blah. Put a couple of infantry into West Russia, because uh, we have this fighter here. He theoretically could come assault it. One, two, three, 
Even though these fighters are now out of range of West Russia. We can only come in with one bomber, so... Let's put both these anti-aircraft up here. So that now there's seven, and the only thing he can do is hit with these ten aircraft. We have this sub here, let's uh, get it over into the Pacific. Okay, that looks good. And we mobilize everything into Moscow. Let's see what Japan has in store for us. Okay, so my opponent has forfeit. I guess he felt that he had no alternative. Uh, I think it was a little premature for him to forfeit like that. The end of Soviet Union's round six, 26 point lead. I guess he couldn't outproduce any of my powers, but he did have more attack power, respectively. The United States couldn't keep up with Japan, and UK couldn't keep up with Germany, but I guess he just felt that uh, his position was not great. I guess that's understandable. Uh, he could have gone another round or two and just see what happens. So my profile, I now I'm 3-1 and one in the Allies, still 2-1 and one in the Axis. And let's see who we're playing. Mr. Mumbo? Appears to be a silver player. Well, they did rank gold for season seven, so we'll call it high silver, low gold. So, Mr. Mumbo, good game. Perhaps we will meet up again in the future. So that's it for this match. I hope you enjoyed watching Allied Placement 2. And if you did enjoy watching Allied Placement 2, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel and do all those wonderful things that you do. And as always, thank you for watching.